Our whole reason for being here is that wolves are still an endangered species in the United States. Not a lot of them left. It's against the law to take a wolf from the wild. It's also against the law to put a wolf back into the wild. Only the federal government's allowed to do that. But unfortunately, there's a lot of wolves already born in captivity. They end up in little roadside zoos, stuck in a cement enclosure, aren't well taken care of. My partner and I wanted to start a place where we could take a handful of them from places like that, build them as large a home as we could afford, and do our best to let them live out their life as a wolf instead of being stuck in a little cage somewhere. We rent property from the campground and have a little over 10 acres fenced in for the wolves, separated into four different compounds, and each compound has a different pack of wolves. There's only two kinds of wolf, the red wolf and the gray wolf, but in the gray wolf family, there are 24 different subspecies. And what we have here are three different kinds of the gray wolf. First one's over on this side, these are the tundra wolves. Kimba, come on buddy, let's go. Come on, this is what pays for dinner. <laughs> Good job, I know it's hot. Look at those tongues hanging out. I know it's hot for you, buddy. These are the tundra wolves. They come from high up in the tundra part of Alaska. In the tundra region, it's mostly rocky terrain, and they've evolved into having mostly a gray fur to help them blend in in that rocky terrain. You see, they're almost the same color as the rocks. Now, wolves aren't that large of an animal. The average size for a male is about 90 to 100 pounds. The females are only about 80 to 90 pounds. Now, a lot of us have dogs at home which are well over 100 pounds. When most people think of a wolf, they think of a big, massive dog, but actually they're a very skinny animal. They need to remain skinny so they can be fast and catch their prey. But in the wintertime, they grow in such a heavy coat of fur that they look twice their size. And most pictures you'll see of wolves are done in the winter when they have that full coat of fur. In the summertime, like now, they shed all that winter fur out. They keep a short summer coat, and a lot of times people come back in the summer and think that we've stopped feeding the animals because they look so skinny. It's actually their normal size. They've just lost all that heavy winter fur. These guys are waiting for their afternoon snack. What I'm going to throw them in here is a few pieces of dog treats, just like you feed your dogs at home. It's not what we normally feed them. I'll tell you about feeding a little bit. But as you can see, their homes are large enough where they could go to the other end and hide. We sure couldn't raise any money if everybody's looking at an empty compound. We'd give them a reward for coming down to the fence. Oh, you ready? <laughs> ready? Ready? There you go. That one's yours. All right. River. There you go, buddy. Kimba. Right there by the tree. Over on the other side, we have a pack of timber wolves. You wait for your <laughs> night song, you coming? I know the routine. These are timber wolves. Timber wolves are from Canada or northern United States. They're the wolves that we had here in New Jersey about 100 years ago. We haven't had any wolves in New Jersey for about 100 to 120 years. That's how long ago they were wiped out by man. No difference between the black ones and the brown ones, just a black color to their fur. About 10 wolves in every 100 will be born black. Probably the number one thing in a wolf's head when it's born is to be afraid of human beings. In the wild, one scent of a human and they run and hide. They say they could smell almost a mile away in the woods. It's all the way back down past the campground. Wolves, in fact, are so afraid of humans, there has never been a case of a wolf attacking a human in the United States ever. It's all from folklore and fairy tales. The reason that these come to the fence for you to see and they're not hiding in the back like a wild wolf would do is that we've raised them from puppies. When they're born, we leave them with the parents for about four weeks so they can get their nutrients they need from the mother's milk. Then we take them from the den and spend two months raising them. That first couple months of their lives is their bonding time. It's who they're going to learn to trust for the rest of their lives. So we take them out. We get them familiar and comfortable with humans. We're accepted as part of the pack. We get them all their shots they need from the veterinarians, and then we put them back in, and the parents take over raising them. Unlike some other animals, which might not accept an infant back in if it has the smell of a human on it, wolves will take any puppy into their pack even if it's not their own. They're a social animal, they're a family animal, they love pups and love to take care of them. Even in cases where they've taken a domestic puppy into their pack, which would be any kind of dog we have at home. Well, maybe not a poodle, or something like a wolf, because <laughs> they feel no threat from a little puppy. They do feel threatened by a full-grown adult. All right, are you guys waiting for your snacks? <laughs> Kiko, that one's yours right there. All right, night song, there you go. Black star right there. All right. <laughs> I have a lot more to tell you. We have more to see. We're going to go up to the top. We have some benches to sit down, and I'll continue up there. Did you get the black ones? Did you? Yeah. The black ones. The black ones. The black ones.